and welcome back to the hot seat with hot mama today i have a very special woman in my life this is one of my mom's best friends and she's definitely been an inspiration to me because she was a formal single mother for many years and i brought her on here today because i really wanted her to come to share her story how she navigated you know being a primary source financially for her family she had um three kids and she was um formally married so I really wanted her to come and tell her story because she is definitely someone I look up to being a single mother and I know that her story can definitely touch many others. So I just want to bring on Miss Robin Baker. Hi. Thank you for coming on here today. Thanks for having me. No problem. So I want you to just kind of like dive right into it. Just kind of tell me your story like when you first got married or when you first had your first child, how that was for you, how old you were and how you really navigating just being you know a parent for the first time wow we got a lot to know <laughs> so okay so i became a parent or a mother at the age of 16. so i was a freshman in high school going to my sophomore year and found out that i was pregnant and so um, my mom instantly transferred me to i don't even know if they have schools like this anymore but i went to like uh, a school for pregnant women for pregnant girls and it was in the city and so I had to leave my high school go to the school until I had the baby I think that's probably was because it was a stigma in the high schools to have pregnant young girls walking around the high school mm -hmm. so they would send you to a school where everybody's pregnant and it was pr predominantly girls my age so it was like freshmen you know all the way seniors in the school it was really interesting but anyway I went to the school uh, went my full term had my baby uh, and then was able to go back to high school, you know, after I delivered my baby. So that's in high school. Was a mom. Uh, there was my boyfriend at the time. Me and him were still together, and so I was in school. He was still in school. My mom worked, but his mom didn't. And so his mom ended up uh, keeping my baby like five days out of the week. Oh, so wow. she would stay there for yeah. She would stay there Monday. I would take her Sunday, and I would pick her up Friday. And so I really would only see her on the weekend for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And so uh, and that was until I was able to complete high school. So I uh, finished high school and uh, was still with my boyfriend. Um, wasn't really thinking of marriage or anything like that. Uh, but in between that time or that journey, I became a Christian. Mm -hmm. And when I became a Christian, you know, dating was not <laughs> Cool. Right. <laughs> because, uh, you know, I have been in this relationship with this guy, we, we've been intimate, we have a baby, and so now to be like, uh, I'm abstaining from sex now, it <laughs> didn't go over very well. And so uh, we ended up breaking up, uh, but I really loved him, and he said he loved me, and I believe he did. And so we ended up, I, you know, I was a new Christian, and all mm -hmm. I'm thinking is, you know, what does God have to say about this? Right. You know, surely he wants me to have my family. He wants me to he raise my daughter with my with her father. And, and I didn't see any other way of doing that outside of marriage. Like, it's possible now, but at the time I was thinking, I would be with this guy. Right. You know, so <laughs> I, I'm going to marry him, you know. He wasn't a Christian, you know, and I received counseling about that, you know, about being on the three, you know, with unbelievers. But I was like, oh, but God, you know, this gonna work out. You know, I'm gonna, he gonna, you know, see my lifestyle as a Christian. He gonna get saved. Gonna be all good. You know, well, we got married uh, against, you know, my uh, counseling from my pastor, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a difficult journey. Uh, he he wanted nothing to do with the church. Wanted nothing to do with Christianity. Uh, shortly after us getting married, I ended up getting pregnant again. Uh, and my daughter Crystal was born, so now I have two kids. Uh, I'm married and I'm 20 years old. So I have I have no idea how to be a mother. I have no idea how to be a wife. So I'm just I'm just in it. I'm just doing what I thought I saw the people do. I'm doing what I saw on TV. I'm doing <laughs> what I saw in the hug stores. I'm doing whatever I saw to make this thing work. And uh, then maybe about a year after that, I ended up having another baby. So now I have three kids under the age of 22. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, 
Wow. Very close in age, too. She's very close in age. Um, and yeah, tough journey. Tough journey. Um, I mean, the marriage didn't work out, you know. Uh, so, not to interrupt you, but so when you guys, at what point did you realize, like, okay, this is not working out? Like, what I'm doing, this marriage is not working out? At what age? Like, what's, you know, where were you at in your life at that time when you're like, this is not working out? I have to do something different. Well, I tried my best to make it work. Um, but I was in church, and I was going to church multiple days a week. Um, my husband, my ex husband, and I, we just weren't on the same page. He was going out, he was, you know, hanging out in the streets. I mean, he was, I, I'm 22 years old, he's 25 years old. You know, we didn't know what we were doing. He didn't know about being a dad and being a husband. And so, you know, we're fighting all the time, you know, and, you know, I'm not working because I'm at home, so, so I'm lonely, I'm by myself because most of the time he's out in the streets and he's working, I have no, nobody to really talk to because none of my friends were in the same predicament that I was in. So I found myself alone. So I, you know, just at home all the time, sad, uh, dealt with depression, don't want to get emotional, <laughs> so I'll pull that back. <laughs> but it was a very, it was a very tough time, very tough time. And actually, I, despite all the fighting and everything, I still, because I believed in marriage and I believe what the Bible said about marriage, and uh, so I wasn't going anywhere. But he, he basically one day was like, you know what, I'm leaving and you need to find somewhere to go. And so, called my mom. He was like, I'm, I'm on my way here, you know, coming home. You know, this is what's going on. And without even thinking about it, didn't realize what was going on, but we were really separated. But I didn't even really think sure. about that. You know, because it wasn't us saying we didn't love each other and this ain't going to work. It wasn't that kind of conversation. It was just him going, you know, I can't, you know, I, you know, I don't want to be here right now. And, you know, but it wasn't him leaving me. It just was, I, I can't deal with the situation, so I'm out. Right. So, and we still kept in touch. You know, we still communicated even when we separated. You know, okay. But I stayed with my mom, he stayed down the street. <laughs> like he moved in with his friends down the street. Really weird. You know, and people in the neighborhood would see him with other women and stuff like that. And it was just, you know, it was a tough time. And I thought we would get back together, and we did. We, we tried to get back together a couple of times. And, uh, but eventually we ended up divorcing. Because like the Bible says, how can two walk together except they agree? And I'm not saying that a Christian and a non-believer can't be together in a marriage, but at the age that we were, we could not manipulate that. We couldn't, we couldn't, you know, take that journey. We were not mature enough to be able to deal with all of that. You know, we didn't know how. We didn't have the tools. He was not going to go to counseling, so us going to counseling was out of the question. So it, it just wasn't a possibility. So we, we did finally. We, we stayed separate for a long time, and he probably would have been okay with it the way it was, but I knew God had something better, and so I sought to get a divorce from him after you know, really asking the Lord, what should I do about my marriage? And then God just really allowed me, after a great number of years, mm -hmm. because it wasn't quick, and it wasn't fast, it was, you know, years before I was able to leave that marriage, that relationship. Yeah. Okay, so now you're divorced and you have these three kids and they are still young. Mm -hmm. So where did you go from there? Where was your mindset at that point where you're like, okay, you know, I have these three kids. It's just me. I know that the father is not, you know, fully in there 100%. We're divorced now. What? Did, where did you go from there and how did you really like navigate and go through starting to really be like a single mother on your own without the father really you know, in the picture. Okay, well, the last time me and my ex-husband were together, uh, we were staying with my sister. And 
my ex-husband had just did three years in prison for something that I won't uh, discuss, but he had just gotten out of prison and I was staying with my sister. When he came home, his behavior was the same. And for the, I, that entire year before he was released from prison, God had, was dealing with me about how much he loved me. He kept telling me, the various people, how much he loved me. So when my ex-husband came home, he, again, picked up the same pattern, same behavior. And it was like, that was it. I was like, I, I can't do it with you anymore. You know, I love myself too much to allow you to, to mistreat me. And so I asked him to leave, and he left. And from that point, we never got back together. Um, so I had to be on my own. I had to get on my own. I, you know, had to live on my own. I did have a job. Eventually, I had gotten a job. So um, I just began to work uh, my job and survive the best way I could. I looked for a place for me and my three kids. Um, we stayed in a couple of apartments, uh, but finally found a place where, that we loved uh, and where we, I still live in the same area that I, I raised my kids in. And it was a tough decision to try to look for a really nice place in a nice area and a nice school district to raise my kids in based on what I was earning. Mm -hmm. But uh, God blessed me to be able to do it. Now mind you, in doing it, I had to make some tough decisions. Maybe I would sit down and do my budget and I would, my rent was very expensive, but I wanted a nice place to stay and I wanted a nice area for my kids. And so I didn't have a car, so I didn't have that responsibility. I did not have a telephone, which aggravated my family because they couldn't get in touch with me. <laughs> but I could not afford a phone. It was one of the luxuries that I could not afford. And so all I could do was pay my rent, have enough, the kids were able to get free lunches at school. I was able to pay the utilities. And I mean, the food, I lived on coupons. Uh, my kids, they, they laugh to this day because they eat so many hot dogs and pork and beans. <laughs> <laughs> and encore dinners. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, if, if they had a treat on the McDonald's, it would be one happy meal and then you know, maybe a large fry and one large coat mm -hmm. for three kids. They were sharing, you know, and Neil would always eat all the food and Nene and Chris would always cry. <laughs> and they'd be like, no, you keep letting me eat everything. I'm like, he's a boy. You know, but anyway. And that uh, that went on for a while. Clipping coupons, uh, living from week. I literally live from day to day. I literally live from day to day. And if things get too tough, like one time I pawned my wedding ring, because I just needed money. I was too proud to ask my family for help. I was too proud to ask my friends for help. And so it was me and my three kids, you know, and uh, I just did the best I could. And there were times when I didn't know the next day. Like I had a job and I, there were times I didn't have money to get to work. But God would always, God would always come through. God would always come through. He would always. And there were people around me that would have helped me. But I didn't ask because I felt that I made the decision that I had to live with the consequences. That's how I felt. It's not true, but that's how I felt. I could have reached out. I could have gotten help. I could have, people would have helped me. As a matter of fact, people did help me. My sister would help me from time to time. But my sister would always be very, you got to do better with your money. You got to, you know, work with what you got so that you cannot, you can't just be living off of people. She would go, so do the best you can, but don't do stuff you can't afford to do. You know, so she would she she was tough, but she was a tough teacher. <laughs> but uh, but she helped me in that way, and so um, but things got better. Things got better. Uh, God blessed me with a talent to cut hair, and I started cutting hair in my home, and that became a second income for us. And so between my full time job and cutting hair, and I had I had a full client list, 
so that I literally had a second job and I was able to supplement our income and things just got better from there. And I talk about that a lot because I, you know, have stated that I, I have dealt with pride. And I think it's the thing is, like you said, is I really thought, well, I made my bed, so I have to lay in it. And I'm glad that I'm learning this is why my kids are young because I had two fairly close and they just got hard. I was like, I have to just start. Because I started to, it started to weigh down on me physically while I was getting sick. I was getting headaches. I went to the doctor. He was like, it's stress. Wow, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I wasn't opening my mouth. I was like, because these are my kids. I have to take care of my kids. But I think it's so important to learn now. And I'm learning that God places people in your life to help you. To help. I have, I was the first one out of all my friends to have kids. And I'm still the first one wow. out of my friends. So I have friends who don't have kids and they're like, Mm -hmm. And I think it's such a blessing because I would be, I was so prideful, I wouldn't even tell my mom who lived down the hall in the same house as me that I just needed two hours to sleep. Mm -hmm. I would be tired wow. and just, I know. and I had to learn that like God was like, ask for help. Yes. Or you're going, you can kill yourself. Yes. <laughs> if you don't, like you can literally kill yourself. And I had to really learn that, you know, God has my situation. I have a lot of family support and I'm so thankful yes. for that. Yes. And now I'm learning to say, you know what? I need help. I need some help. I need, and it's I'm okay. also learning with the budgeting thing because I'm budgeting. I ain't, I'm buying a house next year. I'm yeah. going to that in May. <laughs> I got in the house in 2019, and so I have really like buckled down on my budget, you guys. Like, it's paying off my debt, so I am really tight. Like, and I'm like, it's the summertime. <laughs> you know how the summertime, like, you try to go out, take your baby some places. I was like, I looked up a list of free things that I could do. I'm, for I'm my like, there are free things you could do. My like neighborhood, they have a splash pad. If you live in that neighborhood, it's free. Yes. So I'm like, okay, when it get hot outside, I can take my baby. And my babies are little. Your kid, if your yes. kid, it's so easy yes. to satisfy kids, and you don't need money. No, nope. <laughs> I'm telling you, no, nope. you don't need. And I'm learning that, and like I'm really in a tough season right now because I'm like. I like to shop, I like to buy things, I like makeup, and stuff is expensive. <laughs> yes, it is. And I was like, like I had went through this thing where, well I'm in it now where I'm cleaning out my closet. And I have clothes with tags on it. I was like, I'm not buying anything wow. new until I've worn everything in yeah, my closet. Hello. And I, that, I was like, and I'm looking like I have tons of shoes. I literally don't have space in my closet for the shoes I bought. Wow. And I'm giving away stuff and I think it's just so right i mean so good to go through stuff you could give away god blesses you to bless up to bless others and i'm like i'm not buying anything new until i have bought everything or worn everything in my closet because i would just buy i would just spend i know and i was like I <laughs> look i know you are gonna be not the only one you're not gonna have a house you don't have you don't have this room <laughs> I was like, no, and I'm so glad that you said that, that God taught you or your sister was saying, do what you can afford. Yes. And especially as a single parent, when you have primary one source of income, because mm -hmm. let's be honest, you can't rely on that person. Well, I know in certain situations, mm -hmm. I'd be like, I had no help. No, and it's like, it's you. Yeah. You know, so it's like, you really do have to be smart. And in this day and age, and I'm speaking to my generation, yeah. when you go on social media and you think everybody got it together, so you're trying to keep up with pictures. Mm -hmm. I, I it's have to keep, Jones is keeping up. Right, and I say keeping up with pictures because that's all you're looking at. You don't even know you don't know that. <laughs> you don't even know they could have borrowed this. Right. They could have been whatever it is. Right. You're trying to keep up with pictures. You have to learn to work for you. Yes. Do what's best for you. Not yes. your friend, your sister, your brother, whoever else situation. You got to do what's best for you and your kids. And I'm so glad that you said that, that it started to get better because it's not going to always It's not always going to be better. Be like that. You know, God, God is a faithful God. You know, and as, as you learn and grow, but you have to be willing to learn and grow. Because God is always speaking to you. You know, He speaks in ways you just don't even think about. Just in casual conversations, people will say something to you. And if you actually just listen, you'll be like, wow, that's smart. Oh, wow, I need to do that. I mean, just pay attention to everything that's around. So I want to ask you more like on a financial point, because let me just say, Robin is kind of like my financial advisor. <laughs> I wanted to um, start working on my credit because like I said I'm buying a house next year and I was like I really want to get my credit straight so I was gonna like hire 
hired somebody to help me. I was going to, you know, try to spend money. And she was like, no. So she really pulled me aside. So came, like, I spoke with her on multiple occasions. And even now we check in. I check in with her because she gave me a system. Like, she really helped me buckle down on my finance. I started writing stuff out on my credit, started disputing things, my credit went up. And I think that's so helpful for like the younger generations, like my age mothers, to learn that early. So like if you do what you have to do in your 20s, when your kids get of age where expenses are really expensive, because right now I'm not saying kids are not expensive, but my toddlers, my two year old, my four year old, they don't, their clothes aren't as expensive. Shoes aren't as big, but once they get 10 and 12, oh, yeah. that's a different story. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to kind of get yourself together now when things are manageable yes. and get some good, you know, techniques because when you get, when they get older and money is really, you know, they really <laughs> are expensive. Yeah, School and shoes, activities and yeah, shoes. Yes. And I got two boys, so I know. Um, oh, yeah. She really helped me, so I want you to speak on how you started to do that. Like, you know, you started to really buckle down. You already said you were kind of really tight, but when you did get that second income, you saw things fluctuate a little. How did you really grow into really getting yourself financially steady? Well, God really blessed me, and I always have to, I'm not going to leave the Lord out of it because I knew it was Him. So I'm not going to take credit for anything. There, there was a woman, well, what number one, because I my income was so limited, I would, every pay period, and mind you, my check was not going to change from week mm -hmm. to week or every two weeks. But my check was going to always be the That's same. we wish. Exactly. <laughs> but I would faithfully, and I still do this to this day, I write down all my bills and I look at everything that I have to pay and I look at what my income is. Now, back in the day when I was raising my kids as a single mom, I used to have to play with the numbers. I used to, used to have to play with what I could put on the gas bill, what I could put on, you know, the electricity bill. Sometimes I would call my landlord and say, can I pay half my rent now? And can I pay the other half on the 15th or whatever? I used to have to manipulate my numbers just to make ends meet. I wouldn't grocery shop. I, I just literally had to see what I was living with every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And so I did that for a long time. Um, and then now, as uh, just in general, my pattern is to have a budget. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an advocate of a budget. I'm an advocate of having good credit. I think it's very important. Um, uh, there's nothing wrong with credit cards. You just have to discipline yourself to be able to, when you charge something, pay it off and pay it on time. And you're gonna, when you're, um, when you're navigating through the world of finances, you're gonna have highs and lows. So you'll, you'll start off with a budget and you're doing good, and something will happen, an emergency can come up. And you're gonna have to charge something that you didn't wanna have to charge at a large rate, or you're just gonna feel good about yourself and you know go a little crazy with the charge. <laughs> You know, never, because you figure I can pay it and I don't have an issue with it. But between life stuff that happens and other things that happen, sometimes things can get out of control with your finances. But the bottom line is that what I learned how to do uh, in my own personal life, and uh, I was not always an advocate of paying things on time. Mm -hmm. I would hold off and pay when I could. When I got the money, I would I would let the bill go this month and then pay double up next month. I just, I did what I had to do to survive. Uh, now I know better. And so now what I do is, like I said, every pay period, I already have a budget spreadsheet. You're not, you're not gonna know what you owe unless you write everything down. You need to see a picture of your finances. You need to be able to glance it. You need to be able to, because you can't set goals if you're not looking at it. Right. You want to look at and see what you owe these debtors. You want to devise a plan and say, okay, what's my first attack? Who am I going to pay off first? I'll pay the maximum here, pay the minimum here so that I could wipe away that one and then put the money towards this. So it's just a matter of manipulating things. But the bottom line is you have to be faithful in paying off your creditors. Be faithful in paying off people you owe. Pay people on time. Pay your creditors on time. You'll find, even though you're not going to have money in your pocket because you're paying everything, and so you may have like a little bit left over when you're finished, but as you're paying things down, what you have left over grows, and what you owe goes real small, and that helps you to be able to save. 
having a 401 plan, if you have that on your job, yes. definitely contributing to a 401 plan, contributing to the highest amount you can. Sometimes it's smart if you have money, like if you've been contributing to a 401 plan, and then say you have some like $2,000 of debt that you want to wipe out. Don't contribute for about six months. And take the money that you're putting towards your 401 and just pay the debt off. You and then go turn. back and then turn it back, you know, mm -hmm. start contributing. So there's so many ways that you can financially keep yourself intact. But the most important thing is you're disciplining your spending. You're teaching yourself that these things come first. These are my priorities. And so you can pass that on to your kids because if you don't teach yourself, you're not going to be able to teach your children. You know, so, and I didn't, I didn't mean to leave out, but tithing, number one. You know, always giving back to the Lord. You know, tough area. It is. takes faith. It takes faith. Don't let nobody tell you nothing else. It takes faith. But when you, but when you look at what God gives you, all he, all he's asking for is ten percent. That's all he's asking for. Ten percent. That's nothing. Yeah. But if you are not disciplined in your spending and you want to put your money in other areas or you mismanage your money, then it gets tough. That I can agree on. I started tithing faithfully maybe, it was right after I had Kobe, so maybe about three, four years ago. And at that time, I wasn't making as much as I am now in my job. Um, but I was like, <laughs> and it's like, I wasn't even having to give a lot, like 10%, so I wasn't making that much. So if I had a $700 check, that's $70. Like, come on now. So I really had to teach myself, but I started seeing, and this is just what I tell people, I started seeing myself being able to stretch $50 when I tithe. I could stretch $50 to expand. When I didn't tithe, I would see like $300 just mm -hmm. boop, boop, detract. I'm like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. I can't explain it. But I started tithing the faith. Like now my tithes come out automatically. So whenever I get paid, that 10%, and I pay a little bit more just because um, my job, I mean, my pay period doesn't fluctuate, mm -hmm. but sometimes, you know, it might be $10 less. I'm like, you know what, let me get $20 extra mm -hmm. just to make sure I'm covering it. Good for you. But it comes out automatically. And I, let me just be honest, when I got my income taxes back, because this is my first time I like, really filing for taxes, I was working, so good job, y'all. You know, I got kids. I got money. So I had a nice income <laughs> Going on a trip. And I was like, I'm about to buy me a bag. I was like, y'all, I was talking about my friends. I deserve it. My friends, y'all, shame on y'all. Because I was like, you do deserve I'm it. Shame on my friends. I was like, Nina, you deserve it. Go get you a bag. You deserve it. Yeah. And then I started looking at my dad, like from years ago that I, you know, accumulated. And I was like, no. It was stuff sitting on my credit. So I took my income tax. I put some away in the savings that I can touch, which I think yeah, is very good. important. Yes. And I also put some away that I um, call rainy day savings that I really can Smart. touch, but that's for emergencies. Mm -hmm. Everything else I took and I started paying off my debt on my job. credit. I was like, you want a house? I was like, do you want a bag or do you want a house? <laughs> what, is, what is most important here? <laughs> you want a Louis or do you want a house? So I was like, I really want a house. Like, that is my desire. I want to buy me and my boys a house. So I just started paying off my And I was like, uh, and it made me feel so good because like, I got them letters like, we settled your debt. Yeah. They took it out. I looked at my credit, my credit score shot up. I was like, oh my God, but I was really y'all contemplating because I work downtown, so I'm going to Louis Vuitton <laughs> store on my lunch. I'm going to the store. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming out with that orange bag. <laughs> Don't we all like, like that? <laughs> but I was like, yep, that's what I'm doing. But yeah, I, God really good dealt with me because I I am a, I was a shopaholic at one time. Where I would just spend money on clothes, mm -hmm. shoes, stuff because that's what I like. Mm -hmm. But He taught me how to do it in moderation yes. and he taught me how to do it to my knees like finding yes. stores and online stores coupons deals certain things that when I can mm -hmm. shop I'm still not spending a lot of money but I'm getting the things that I want right and it really taught me because now I'm like okay no you can't you know you can't go buy some news you got shoes wedding yes. 
to right. switch it up. And I'm learning, I'm on Pinterest, I'm following different mm -hmm. bloggers, I'm learning how to switch mm -hmm. up different shirts and pants and skirts and dresses yeah. so it can look like brand new outfits, but I'm utilizing because I have to sacrifice now mm -hmm. so that I don't, when I get, you know, later on in life when I bought me a house, I get a good interest rate so my yes. mortgage is not Very off important. the chain. Mm -hmm. I can have more money to shop when I'm paying a lesser mortgage. I'm like, okay. Yes. I don't have to pay a high car note because I have good interest, good yes. credit. So do what you have to do now yes. so later you can do what you really want to do. Yes. So I'm like, I had to say that because I was, y'all, I was there. Like, I was about to, I was going to be one of the memes. Like, <laughs> they got their taxes right, right. back. <laughs> and they got Louis. I was going to be one of them because I was on my way. I'm in Jamaica. <laughs> Now I have to have her tell y'all her love story because I just love her, her husband Larry. <laughs> oh my God! This I'm just saying from a it gives me faith. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Wright, you out, you out there. there. <laughs> so I want her to tell you guys her testimony, how God blessed her with this amazing husband. So when did you meet Larry? And how long had you been divorced or been a single mother? How old was your kid? So how long have you waited for this? Okay, so just so you know, my first husband was my first sexual relationship. Mm -hmm. So after him, I was with no one else until I met my second and now husband, present husband Larry. Hold out! <laughs> it is possible. <laughs> and so literally my kids were... My youngest kid, which is Neil, was in a senior in high school. Mm -hmm. So I had been a single woman from the time that Neil was probably two years old, two, three years old. 16, yeah. 17. So it was a long time. And, um, and I didn't bring men around my kids. I, didn't, I did not even do I didn't even entertain it. Number one, because I had three kids. <laughs> so in my mind, I'm like, <laughs> Good luck with that. Like, <laughs> good luck with that. But uh, and I just focused my energy on raising my kids. Really, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't really thinking about dating like that because I was still emotionally jacked up. Like, I was still hurt. I was in love with my first husband, and I. It took me a very long time to get over my emotional vibe, my my soul tied with him. It took me a long time. To uh, but God did break the tie, and so, and that was, he actually broke it when I divorced him. Mm -hmm. But then, I still knew that I was damaged emotionally, and that I would dealt with some issues like, you know, low self-esteem and, you know, my self-worth. I just didn't really get my self-worth. And so it took uh, going through raising my kids, and God just building me up. You know, I had to be built up. I had to, to focus on me. I had to get, that was one of my, part of my journey was uh, focusing on myself, making sure that uh, I was able to take care of myself, take care of my kids. And so, anyway, so Neil is like 18. He's in high school. He's getting ready to graduate. Uh, life is pretty good for us because, you know, my oldest daughter is in college. Uh, my Crystal is in college. And so, my oldest daughter had moved out. It was me, Crystal, and Neil at home. Crystal's away at school. So it was Neil and I at home. So financially, things have, as the kids got older and they were able to work and have jobs and things like that, things got easier and better for us. I was able to buy myself a car. So just life in general just was better. So I'm out here, you know, I'm just now starting to really think about dating. I'm, I, I dated a couple of guys, but, you know, nothing major. So. It was about maybe the, the third guy, which Larry came along. I'm, I'm at this uh, ABC Auto Parts store. Now, I got to tell you the story because I, I just know it's God. That's why I got to tell you the story. <laughs> so I just, I'm a clean freak. I'm OCD. Probably wash my car probably every week, uh, same day. I'm out in front of my apartment. I'm washing my car. It's a little windy, but it's a very nice sunny day. Mm -hmm. So I take the mat out of the back of my trunk and lay it on the grass because I spray it down. You know, I'm just, I just clean the whole car inside out. A wind gust comes and my mat blows away. Now, mind you, there's, the street is empty. 
Like there no, the street is empty. I'm thinking my mat blew under my car. So I'm looking for my mat. I can't find my mat. I'm looking down, I'm looking across the street, down the street, I'm looking and I cannot find my mat. I'm not joking. It was the weirdest thing ever. And it upset me so bad. And I was just like, what? I couldn't understand where my mat went. <laughs> so anyway, so I need to go get a new mat for my car because now when I put something in the trunk, stuff is all, you know, in the right. trunk. So talk, I gotta go get me a mat. But I was accustomed to doing things myself. Uh, whether it's paywalls, yeah, yeah. whether you know, whatever I needed to do, I just did that myself. So I went to this ABC Auto Press store. So I'm in there and I'm sitting down. So it's Saturday morning early. And I used to get up, I was accustomed to getting up early on Saturdays because I would get up and go flea market shopping, I'd go garage sale, mm -hmm. you know, I'd just be out there. You know, I'd go to the car wash, whatever. So I'm at ABC Auto Parts. This guy comes in. So, you know, I look at the guy, you know, whatever, you know, kind of arrogant. He walks in, he, <laughs> he got this dude got on dress clothes, <laughs> head freshly shaved. And I'm thinking to myself, that's an auto parts store. Who comes in an auto parts store with dress clothes on? It's all in here. It's dirt. This is how I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. You front. That's all I'm saying. I said front. So I'm sitting back. I got. I, I'm tacky. I have to put makeup on. <laughs> I do a hat on my head. I got on sweats. And I'm just sitting there. So I kind of crouch down in my seat. So he walks over. He sits about two seats over. And I'm like, great. He's going to try and talk to me. Not that I'm married now. But I just could tell his mannerism. Mm -hmm. I was like, here we go. So I'm sitting there, I'm down, I got my hat down, I didn't pull Trying to look up. unapproachable. I'm trying, be, I'm trying to be low. You know how many you try to do right. that? Right. I'm, I'm like trying to show me, <laughs> shut you down. And the dude goes, you know, hey, how you doing? He just starts talking to me. Okay, hey. You know, I'm short with my answers. I'm, I'm cold, I ain't saying much. You know, eventually we start chatting. He's asking me if, you know, I mean, you know, you're married, you got kids, you know, basic stuff. So I'm, we go through all that. So he goes, you know, maybe I'm going to take you out. Huh? Whatever, you know. So I give him my card, my business card for my job. So I leave. He walks me to my car, get my part, my, my mat, walks me to my car. And then I, he goes, okay, I'll be calling you soon. Cool. So I get in my car, I leave. <clears throat> I'm not five minutes out of the auto parts store. My phone is ringing. I'm like, okay, hello, it's this dude. I'm like, really? <laughs> He's like, I just want you to give me a bogus number. Okay, cool. I give you that. Okay, so fast. Yeah, because we all yeah, you did. know, we all <laughs> that. We we all right, right. So I, okay, talk to you later. I leave again. Now, in the midst of us talking, I told him that I'm very busy on Saturdays. I have a list of things, like I do my laundry, I grocery shop, so I'm like, I don't, I don't, I can't go out, whatever. And I don't want to go out with him because I just met him. So I was trying to, you know, whatever. He calls me again, like 30 minutes. I'm like, okay, dude, I'm at the laundromat. I said, I, I, you know, maybe call me like another day, right? He cool, he played off, yeah, okay, ha ha, what? Now, same evening, I'm covering my hair. <laughs> my phone rang. It's this dude. Dang. Dude, I got hair color. And I'm annoyed because I got hair color in my hair. And I'm like, I'm coloring. I got my gloves on. Dude, I'm coloring my hair. I, I, you know, I pretty much said, this is my busy day. <laughs> you know, and dude, response was, well, you know what? When you get time, you call me. And he hung up on me. I was like, you ain't getting no call. <laughs> actually, the opposite response happened. I went downstairs to my neighbor and I said, I said, girl, I just messed up. I think I messed up. This is what I said to my neighbor. I finished washing my hair because his tone was so serious. And so I ran downstairs and I was like, Jay. I said, girl, I think I just messed up. And I was telling him I met this dude, you know, and I was like, I think I just messed up. Dang. I was like, whatever. You know, so I went to church the next day. I'm driving home from church. Bling, phone again. He goes, well, I know you probably just left church. You got to get something to eat. He was like, so would you meet me for lunch? Or can I take you to lunch or dinner? And I was like, yeah. So he met, met me at my place. Took me to a very nice place downtown. He was all trying. I was like, he's trying to impress me. 
you know, got the one to, to impress. So I went to these just beautiful place, cobblestone streets, I up mm -hmm. like Oak Street. I had never even been over in that area in the city. <laughs> I was like, woo -hoo -hoo, you know, all the big stores. I was like, ah. you know, I was playing it low, like, well, this is cool, you know. And uh, he was asking me, what you looking for in a man, you know, and I, and I said, I'm going to get him with this one. I said, well, I said, if he loves the Lord with all his heart, I said, I only had to work out myself because he don't love me. I said, so he's got to love God. And he said, oh, I got that. <laughs> and I'm listening to me in the car. Mm. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> yeah, you know, and, but we talked that evening. We were able to talk about everything. Like we put all our cards on the table and toward the end of the evening, he got very serious with me. And he was like, uh, how do you do this dating thing? And I go, what do you mean? He goes, you know, getting your feelings hurt. Meet somebody that you actually probably really like, but they may not like you the same or whatever. And I go, you know what? I said, I meet people, if, if it's a hit, it's a hit. If it's not, I got to get dinner out of it. And I joked about it and just kind of let it go. Mm -hmm. So anyway, he called me back. He told me he was a truck driver. He told me he was on the road all the time. He wasn't home during the week. And he said to me, I'm gone Monday through Friday. He was like, would you mind if when I'm home on the weekends, you spend your time with me? Like He was like, can you just make yourself available for the weekends? And he was like, OK. <laughs> and it was interesting because I had just met him. But he was coming on so strong that I literally prayed. I was on the phone with him one night. This was the kicker. So I was dry, I would drive my kids to their jobs. Mm -hmm. Like Neil, I'd take them to work, pick them up from work, whatever. And so he said to me, because I would be like, I gotta go get Neil. And he'd be like, you gotta go pick up Neil. I'm like, yeah, he get off work, I gotta go pick him up. And he'd go, well, you know what? He said, uh, I have a, he said, why don't you just let the kids drive your car? And I was like, what? And he said, yeah. He says, I just bought a, a, a new truck. He says, I'm gone Monday through Friday. It just sits in front of my house. He says, why don't you just drive my truck and let the kids drive your car? Mm -hmm. So I go, wow. Now I am a Christian. So, okay. But I, when he said that to me, I said, and at the same, in the same conversation, because I was, I didn't just like, I didn't right away go, okay. Right. You know, because it's a serious move. <laughs> so, I, I, but in the middle of our conversation, him telling me I could use his car, he also said, I said to him, at some point, I was going to trade my car in and get another car. And he says, I don't think that's a good idea. He said, because I just bought this truck and we won't need two new car notes. And I go, Ooh. So I got very quiet. <laughs> I didn't respond. I kind of act like I didn't hear it. But when we finished talking on the phone, I prayed and I said, Lord, this guy is very serious. And I said, I don't need to take this any further if I should. I said, so I need to know, is this the guy? Because I, I, I ain't dealing with crazy. This is right. what <laughs> He was coming on so strong, and I, and but the but the the connection we had was so crazy, like it it clicked, mm -hmm. and so within a week we met and talked within a span of a week. He came home that first weekend. He took me to Dave and Buster's. We were sitting. No. He took me, once we went to see Spider-Man on a Monday, he didn't go to work, and I took off. We went to see Spider-Man, then that weekend he came home, we went to Dave & Buster's. We had talked that entire week, mm -hmm. and by the time we was at Dave & Buster's, we were sitting at Dave & Buster's, and both of us had this really, I had this really weird feeling, and he had to, he had, both of us were like weird. Mm -hmm. we, were like, <laughs> we were like sitting in the Time booth, going out. Yeah, we were like sitting in the booth kind of like, you know, <laughs> right? And then he says to me, "I don't know about you, but I'm looking at my wife." And I go, "Yeah," I said, I "I'm looking at my husband." And we, we, we didn't say anything else. We wouldn't order our food. We wasn't eating much back then because we were in love. So we, I mean, we never ate. We ordered food and didn't eat. Now let me get that. But, but, I, I, <laughs> I be what? We never ate. How we 
was extra. extra. <laughs> But needless to say, we left out of there. We were holding hands. Um, and so how long was it from there until you guys got married? He proposed or? So Dave and Buster, the next day, we was driving to Beverly, talking about where we were going to live. Mm -hmm. Then he took me to a jewelry store and we, talked, we, we looked at rings. And then, so that was in April. In June, he proposed and gave me a ring. And I said yes. And in October, we got married. So it was like so boom, was, boom, was, boom. And going on 16 years later, yeah. <laughs> he's the love of my life. So God, God. So God came through. He make you yeah. wait as long as you had waited. The process was not, some people think like, it's gonna be this long, hard no. process of men and men and men. No. But you listen to God. Yeah. And God told so you don't have to go through another heartbreak or another heartbreak exactly. or another heartbreak. Exactly. You don't have to deal with that. So when God when it was your time, God brought him and it happened like that. Just like that. I mean it was a no brainer. Uh he's the exact person for me. I would not have picked him. That's why I know God sent him. Because I wouldn't have picked him for me. But he's the exact person that I need, and he's so he's so the polar opposite of me. But he so gives me all the things that I need. Like he builds me up. He 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 tells me, you know, he he, he encouraged me to live. You know, when you're a single mom and it's all about your kids, you know, sometimes you don't know how to live because you're you're constantly sacrificing for your kids. Mm -hmm. So you don't know how to think about yourself. You know, but he taught me how to live my life for me and it was okay to live my life for me. And to put myself first and put kids second. He taught me that. So, I mean, he's just, he's just a great guy. But God did. So, he will do it for you. Ladies, it's home. <laughs> <laughs> I said this in my previous video, I was saying it again. It is hope. Okay, stay hopeful with me. <laughs> yes, seriously. I mean, God knows your heart. You know, and even though I had a first failed marriage, I knew that it, it did not discolor me or make me feel any way about marriage. Mm -hmm. I still felt God, just because I made a mistake and got into a bad relationship, did not discount what the Bible said about marriage. That God, I mean, God honors marriage. And God is going to give me what's best for me. And I have to believe, like Jeremiah 29 11 says, that he has a hope and a future for me. And if I ha and I haven't done to that. God, you got a plan for my life. I don't see it, but you have a plan. I just have to trust it. And so that's what I that was my journey. I don't see the plan. It don't make sense. I don't know why I got I don't know why I had to raise my kids alone. I, I still don't have an answer for it. But, you know, I can sympathize with women that are single mothers, but I learn things along the way. Ask for help. There are people willing to help you. Sometimes you're going to have to walk it alone. You can't always lean on people. Sometimes it will be just on you. But balance it out. You know, but at the end of the day, it's going to, God is going to, my kids are blessed. I've seen my kids, I've seen the favor of God in my kids' lives and the grace of God. And so, that's what God will do for you and for your children. Your honor. Yes. yes. So I just want to thank you so much for coming on the hot seat and getting in the hot seat and getting real <laughs> hot, hot and real, <laughs> real with us because I think like we just you know that's what we need. I think the world needs to see women, men, children. Everyone needs to see real people. This is real people and God is blessing real stories and I just want to thank you so much for coming on here. You're welcome. I have truly been blessed and I hope you guys are too and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>